What's going on with Chinese loans in Africa? Did China seize an airport in Uganda? China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. The Belt and Road Initiative is China's plan to build infrastructure projects all around the world and infect the world with terrible earworms. Yes, I did have to play that. Publicly, the Communist Party says the Belt and Road is about connecting the world through economic development, but in reality, it's their plan for global economic colonialism. Go around the world to poor developing countries and give them huge loans they can't pay back. Meanwhile, the infrastructure they build often has, uh, well, let's call it made in China quality. And last week, reports came out that Uganda failed to make good on one of the loans it got from China, and so China seized its airport. But now, both Uganda and China are saying that's not true. Apparently, the confusion happened because Uganda sent a delegation to China to renegotiate part of the loan agreement. The Ugandan government wanted to renegotiate things like whether they could spend certain money without approval from Beijing. And China refused to renegotiate. But Uganda hasn't defaulted on the loan. At least, not yet. A government spokesperson said, the Ugandan government has no intention of defaulting on loan repayments to China. Well, no one plans on defaulting on a loan, but it happens. So what will happen to the airport if Uganda can't pay China back? No one seems to be answering that. The Chinese embassy in Uganda issued a statement saying, the loan was signed voluntarily through dialogue and negotiation on equal footing without any hidden terms or political conditions attached which is a super suspicious response to the question, will you seize control of the airport? The loan was voluntarily signed. Right. Uganda currently owes China $1.6 billion in loans, which is about 4% of Uganda's total GDP. So could China seize the airport if Uganda defaults? Well, maybe, but for context. A decade ago, China helped Sri Lanka build a huge shipping port. But by 2017, Sri Lanka was struggling to pay interest on its foreign debt, and the port just wasn't doing as much for the economy as they'd hoped. So Sri Lanka sold China a 99-year lease on a majority stake in that port, meaning China has essentially taken over a port it helped Sri Lanka build. Now you could argue that technically China didn't take over the port. They just have a majority share and are running it. So if Uganda is struggling to repay its loan, I don't think we'll see China take over their airport. But they might just, you know, get a sweet leasing deal. I believe that's what Xi Jinping calls win-win mutual cooperation. Now despite this history of sketchy deals with China, two more African countries are joining the Belt and Road Initiative, including Eritrea, a brutal dictatorship after China's own heart. Nevertheless, anti-Chinese sentiment might be on the rise in Africa, including in another lovely dictatorship, the Democratic Republic of Congo. China has been very active in mining operations there. Nothing beats cheap child labor and a government that looks the other way, am I right? Last month, five Chinese citizens were kidnapped there. Very few details were given, though the Chinese embassy said, there was little possibility of sending help in the event of an attack or kidnapping. That's China's actual wolf warrior diplomacy. Do absolutely nothing to help its citizens abroad. Now China is flat out asking all Chinese citizens in the eastern part of the DR Congo to leave. But that's not stopping the Belt and Road Initiative, no. In fact, China just held its eighth forum on China-Africa cooperation. Xi Jinping promised to send one billion doses of COVID vaccines to Africa. Yes, 
China will sell them Chinese-made vaccines that are kind of effective to fight a virus that was probably created in a Chinese lab. So generous. And meanwhile, Xi Jinping even called China's relationship with African countries a partnership of equals. Presumably a partnership where all countries are equal, but some countries are more equal than others. And now it's time for me to answer a question from you, a fan who supports China Uncensored on Patreon or Locals. Kirsten Dress on Patreon asks, China seems to steadily push the boundaries on violating Taiwanese airspace. At what point will the world, especially NATO, accept retaliation? Or is this slow but steady invasion of Taiwan never going to be sudden enough for today's attention span? Great question, Kirsten. China has not technically crossed into Taiwan's airspace, as in the airspace directly over the country. But it is slowly pushing further and further into Taiwan's air defense identification zone, which they didn't used to cross. When that happens, Taiwan's air force scrambles its planes and tells the Chinese planes to leave. And so far, they have. But if Taiwan shoots a plane down, then it's Taiwan's fault for starting a war. At least, that's what the Communist Party hopes for. But if Taiwan just lets Chinese planes encroach, then the party will gradually be able to claim Taiwan, which is also what the Communist Party hopes for. But rather than wait for a slow and steady invasion, there are lots of things NATO countries can do. Like, each time China encroaches on Taiwan's air defense identification zone, countries should push back. But in a non-war way, like by stationing additional troops in Taiwan, or sending high-level officials to visit Taiwan. The Chinese regime will get the hint. And if not, there are bigger non-war tactics too, like doing joint military drills with Taiwan. The question is, will NATO countries actually push back? Thanks for your question, Kirsten. And thank you all for watching. Be like Kirsten and support our work on the subscription platform Locals or the crowdfunding platform Patreon. We rely mainly on viewer support to keep this show going. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.